What do you know? We're halfway through the year 2024, and Bunny XO is still being a garbage human being. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chelsea, you know that, I know that. I'm just a lady with a bulldog, a camera, and far too many opinions. And I am 100% of the opinion that Bunny XO is not the girl's girl, the realist be out there that she portrays herself to be and that she, in my opinion, has convinced her audience that she is either. I don't know about y'all, but if I was a, a girl's girl, I wouldn't be silencing other women or anyone by removing their content online that was about me just because I didn't like it. Now, don't get it twisted. If someone is purely just re-uploading my content without adding any commentary, then yeah, I'm going to have it taken down because that's not protected under fair use. You, you can't do that. What you doing? However, if there is commentary, which as a semi-public figure and as an influencer, as a YouTuber, as a social media content creator, we get it. There's going to be people who don't like you and who make videos about you or Reddit posts or whatever, right? That's part of the job. Is it annoying? Sure. But it's part of the job. You can't just have all those taken down. Unless you're Bunny XO and you literally just try to have everything taken down. That mentions you. That isn't positive. For instance, this week, Bunny XO or her lawyer had a post on my own subreddit page taken down, r slash Chelsea Suarez. A user whose butt looks so good and they are so spicy. They are in Wiggum's downline. Chelly posted that Bunny was being problematic during a death penalty trial and posted about the current story we're going to talk about today. I'm not even joking. Within a day, that was removed from Reddit. It is so crazy. Hey friends, so I'm just sitting here bedazzling a new prop, duh. When I see on my little news widget that Ticketmaster has been hacked and 560 million of their users had their data put up on the dark web, the spooky dark web for sale. How crazy is that? Now that data includes full names, addresses, email addresses, phone numbers, credit card information. At best, it could just lead to, you know, obnoxious scam likely calls where someone from a call center is trying to get you to buy a Medicare knee brace or, you know, telling your grandma that they won the lottery when they did not. And at worst, it could result in a lot of fraud. Why can't these data brokers, instead of just buying people's information so that they can scam and spam and do a bunch of harm, why don't they just bedazzle something? It's so calming. I don't get it. But you know who does get it? Aura, obviously the sponsor of this video. Now Aura is amazing and they alert me to when I have been a part of one of these data breaches so that not only I know that I've been a part of this, but then also they will submit opt-out requests on my behalf and do all that hard work for me so I don't even have to worry about it. Because it is on us to do something about it. And that can be such a hassle because companies that have these big breaches like Ticketmaster, they aren't going to do anything about it. They're just going to send out possibly an email and be like, hey, change your password. Sometimes that's not enough. Aura also gives me super fast fraud alerts. There's credit monitoring, a VPN, parental controls, password management, things that I used to have across like five different apps, I now have in one place at one price. If my information was compromised by that Ticketmaster data breach, I don't even have anything to worry about because Aura is working on the back end and really taking care of everything for me. Always there, hanging out, keeping me safe. Now, I don't wanna be vulnerable to breaches. I'm not taking that chance, that's why I use Aura, but I don't want you and your family to be vulnerable to breaches either. So go ahead and take advantage of the two week free trial with Aura by going to aura.com slash CC Suarez. And that's for a two week free trial with Aura. Let's clean up that digital footprint and keep you safe from scammers and spammers on the internet and in real life. I really do think that Bunny has like, she's got Jeanette, also known as Janet, Braun IP Law, you know, or Janet, you might know her as Janet over here and over there everywhere. You might know Janet 
from you know other videos i'll have those linked down below a master playlist i've made it's just glorious but she she literally has her working so hard what are you doing and also for mama tot allegedly as well you might be like oh my god chelsea mama tot i love her like don't tell me don't tell me that mama tot is problematic now listen i have some colleagues that y'all don't like i got there are some people here and there that might have done some problematic things that y'all don't like that i that i may you know talk to here and there i get it however i'm not going to defend their actions and allegedly i'll try to find a screenshot of it but mama tot was like being supportive of bunny xo in her comment section on tiktok regarding all the backlash that she is getting on this current little poop show that she's in and allegedly mama tot also has a lot of stuff removed about her on reddit now again if it's something like threatening or harassing or like literally crazy yeah have it removed don't use false reporting systems to get things removed. Personally, I made a rule in my own subreddit, which tricks on y'all, I'm the moderator. <laughs> Eventually I might get another moderator, I don't know. But I'm the moderator in there. One of the rules is don't be annoying or weird. Guess what? If I think you're annoying or weird, you're gonna get banned <laughs> because this is a dictatorship. All right, anyways, that doesn't mean you can't talk about me anywhere else. If you want to, go ahead. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Bunny XO is, like I said, a garbage human being. Now, th her fans are so just like blind, in my opinion, and just make so many excuses for her. Let's go over a little bit of lore. Okay. So, Bunny XO seeped into the radar, rather, of the commentary YouTube space when her lawyer and another TikToker, Lauren the Mortician, went after a podcast and multiple other. TikTok creators, Becca Day and Caffeinated Kitty, and then Jesse and Lily of the Do We Know Them podcast. I made a huge video about this with a cork board and to show you Jeanette Braun, her clients, and then who she's gone after for those specific clients. So go watch that if you'd like. It is crazy. I have multiple different videos about it, them following the lawsuit and all that. So Bunny is quite possibly Jeanette's, I'd say most successful, most wealthy client and bunny previously has even said that if she doesn't like what you're posting about her that she's going to have it taken down but also that's not how the internet works that's not how free speech works i mean her and i and almost all these other people are in america we have free speech and as far as i know from the people that she has falsely had these things taken down none of what they were saying was going against the community guidelines and stuff like that of the particular social media platforms that they were taken down on having things falsely taken down and just like not even caring about that or seeing an issue with that now after i posted my jeanette braun deep dive video and you know the whole spider web of it and of her clients and their controversies from there i also also made a video about a bunny XO. And for the Jeanette Braun deep dive, Jeanette Braun tried to have that video of mine taken down. And then she also on her own behalf saying that I was violating copyright, which no, it's not. It's protected under fair use. This woman, in my opinion, just is, is a horrible lawyer and should be disbarred and does not understand clearly how fair use works. And it's just truly wild. However, she tried to have that video taken down. YouTube was like, no. And then she tried to have another video taken down that I had specifically made about Bunny. And by that time, I had already made two other videos about Bunny and my correspondence with her and how she had like DM me, then blocked me and then like DM'd me again and like was mad that I posted about her. And then she was saying that she did not know anything about her lawyer trying to take these videos down on her behalf and then going further to say that Bunny was going to sue me and YouTube and their parent company, Google. So that's pretty egregious. One could say that she was going rogue. And then a day or so after that whole thing and after I posted like three videos about it because I am a clout queen. Bunny then was posting in TikTok comments or some comment sections in different places that she had fired Jeanette Braun over this. Well, uh, that's not true, is it, Ellen? Because about a month ago, by the time we post this video, about a month ago, Bunny was called out by Goob on Instagram. We love Goob here. He calls out not only child predators, but also people who lie about their bodies and filtering their bodies and all that, and like then use that to sell and, you know, to their 
audience and manipulate their audience and stuff like that, which is very unethical. So he was calling out someone else. Bunny then commented on it and was like, oh, you should go easy on her, blah, blah, blah. And Goob was like, you edit your photos too. Like that's rich coming from you, whatever, that whole thing. And she's like, no, I don't. And he's like, actually, yeah, you do. Here's <laughs> like, here's a side by side of a Getty image and then what you posted. It's the same picture that's edited, like clearly back and forth that's edited. And it was. So not only did she do that, but then she lied about it. I don't have a problem that she edited her picture. I don't care. She's not selling anything to my knowledge regarding like those fake results. However, she was lying about it. And then not only that, that's one problem. And then problem number two with that whole situation and all these situations is that she then went further to not only legally threaten him, but then had the video taken down for copyright infringement, which it's like, it's a picture of your face that someone else took. You don't own that. (laughs) You own your face, but not a picture of it. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And she tried to say that, that she actually had her face trademarked. Uh, That's not how that works, Bun Bun. She then not only threatened him legally, but then also unfortunately successfully had those videos taken down a few times. So then he posted them to his second account, which is great. And then also I posted them on my channel too. So they are you know, memorialized and safe on YouTube because she can't have my videos taken down. She can try and they have tried and they've failed miserably. And when looking at the copyright notice that was sent over from Meta to Goob, I even asked them, I was like, hey, does it say who requested to have it taken down? And he was like, yep. He sent it right on over to me. And guess whose name was on there? Braun IP Law. What do you know? So she didn't fire Janet. Mm, Janet, Janet, Janet. So lying about filtering pictures and editing them, then legally threatening people for just saying the truth and then lying about firing your lawyer. How do her, how are her fans okay with this? Like it is wild. So one more thing recently over the last few days that people are really not happy with Bunny about, especially her own audience, is that Bunny has come out saying this. Let's go ahead and just roll the video. Do you guys want to know what we just did? Should we tell them memes? Let's tell them. We just called the Florida, one of the jails in Florida to talk to Wade Wilson to get him on the podcast because I am fascinated with his story. And now that he's saying he's innocent and like, you know how like the internet is like, just like half of him is divided because everybody's like, oh dude, he's so fine. And the other half are like, I'd let him run me over. And then the other half are like, oh my God, what a weirdo. So how cool would it be if I got to go into the jail and sit down with him and do a podcast? for like our murder mystery podcast that we do once a month. What do you guys think? Because if anybody has any connections to Wade, let your girl know. Well, it looks like this is another case of garbage attracting garbage. If you are unaware, Wade Wilson is not only the name of the Marvel character whose alter ego is Deadpool, but it is also the name of a absolute horrible, despicable, gross human being who was just sentenced to not live anymore by the state of Florida. Let's give a round of applause for Florida. This feels wrong. <laughs> Listen, we might not have the right to our own uterus, ut- uteri, uteruses, but we'll sentence these garbage people to death, which I still feel weird about. Now, I don't want to get too into what wade wilson did but it's it's truly horrific just absolutely disgusting he did take the life of two women almost three it was i feel like he was shooting for three that day and it was within like 72 hours it was in south florida literally for like no reason not that there ever is a valid reason obviously absolutely crazy and so he admitted to it in interviews he's on recordings admitting to it and then also he tried to escape from jail he recently was sentenced to death he's apparently recounting everything and saying like no that wasn't me i didn't do it like was not me wasn't there couldn't be me right and I just, I hate even talking about it because like, he's so just disgusting. Now, Bunny, like we saw on her TikTok was like, oh yeah, we just got off the phone and like, we're going to interview him and like, we're going to go in there and talk to him because I just find it so interesting. Why do you find it interesting? It's probably one of the the least interesting cases because like he, j- he just did it. He's just a disgusting monster who just did that. And I'm not saying other people who do this aren't disgusting monsters, but with people like... 
it's it's tricky to even talk about so if you're someone who is into psychology or you know true crime and and stuff like that there are certain stories where in instances and obviously it's real life that really just make you think about like the psychology of it all this isn't one of those you know stories like ed kemper or stories like Ed Gein, Ted Bundy, right? I feel like all of those, the psychological aspect of it is just so deep and so interesting. Yes. And yes, it can be interesting and horrifying at, at the same time, but it's the psyche of it all that is so interesting. This is not interesting. <laughs> this is not. This is someone who just committed these atrocious, heinous, awful crimes just because. That's it in my opinion, and who now is saying, oh, I didn't do it. That had nothing to do with me. And that is so horrible. And an aspect of this too, that is just so creepy is people saying like, oh, well, and Bunny even said this in her TikTok, people saying, oh, I let him hit me with his car. And that's, that's how he finished off one of the victims, unfortunately. And it's so sad. And like the quote that he says regarding that is disgusting. And I can't even repeat it. Like, oh my God. Ugh. I'll tell you, I don't know how Sherilyn and other true crime people do it because I cannot. It's just so atrocious. And if Bunny was someone who was like a Sherilyn Dale or like a, a Kendall Ray or Shoot, even me, someone who, you know, does interviews for like research purposes, and I'm not calling us journalists, but someone who does that type of investigatory, like storytelling sometimes with me types of videos, then obviously, sure, that would make more sense. However, her wanting to go and talk to him, like, why? Is it just because he's before he had all the tattoos on his face and before he did a bunch of drugs and murdered multiple people because he was like generally attractive at that time? Is that why? Is, is it because he fits your aesthetic? That's disgusting. And I hate it so much. And so I feel like this really just adds to the long, 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 long list of reasons why Bunny XO is a garbage human. And I cannot, in my opinion, and I just, I cannot stand that. It's so gross. And listen, am I the like upper echelon or like the benchmark of ethical behavior? No. I love watching the Kardashians. That's my trashy TV. I buy Skim. I swear by that brand. I love that brand. Have I made true crime content before and not yesified it, but not gone about it the right way? Yeah, there are a few videos that I, you know, made and it was more so just like sitting down and like retelling the story to you like kind of from memory absolutely for like research purposes on my own and not for the public have I interviewed people who have been involved in these types of insane cases and crimes and written letters to people like this for interview requests for research purposes a lot of times it was like the arresting officer or a detective or something like that but there have been like one or two like criminals that I've tried to get in contact with, but for like research purposes of videos that are much bigger that I've been working on. But yeah, is it because I find their story so interesting and because they fit my tattooed aesthetic and because they're hot and because a lot of people in my audience are like thirsting over this murderer? No. Again, I think she's gross. And just like I always say, you can find out a lot from someone if they like Colleen Hoover books or if they don't think that Jane Austen is hilarious. That girl is so funny. I love her. You can also tell a lot by someone if they see no problem with Bunny XO. Now, if they don't know about any of the problematic and okay. For instance, like I just unsubscribed from Cody Ko, which is, I, it makes me very upset because I love him. But you know what I don't love? That, right? I don't love statutory situation. I'm trying not to get demonetized. This video probably will get demonetized anyways. I support Tana. Never thought I'd say that, but 100% I do. And I wish her the best. So anyways, I just wanted to make a quick video about how Bunny XO is a garbage human being. And if you come back to this video in a few days, a week, whatever, I'm sure you will see absolutely unhinged fans, stands, garbage gremlins in the comments being like, you're just jealous. I don't want or need that money. 
No one needs that much money. I do think her husband has the voice of an angel. Not really a fan of him either because he's married to her. Don't want her body, face, whatever. Don't care about that. Love my body and face. I'd rather have the little bit of shred of integrity that I have, not have that audience base and not be a clout goblin like she is, okay? I'm a clout queen, not a clout goblin. There is a difference. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. And if you like Bunny XO, hey, that's okay. However, if you're going to be someone who's going to be sticking up for her against people who are literally just showing facts and using her own words against her, you got issues and you should probably figure that out because that's embarrassing. All right. So please subscribe to those girlies, Becca Day, me, the Do We Know Them podcast, anyone who has been sued by, attempted to be silenced or personally victimized by not Rudy Gina George, but Bunny XO and her gremlin of a lawyer. If you are subscribed, your butt looks so, so, so good and your feelings are valid and you are valuable. And I hope that you get your favorite snack today. I kind of want to go get my favorite salad right now, but I have a meeting in four minutes, so I can't. And if you're not subscribed, I don't know, you're dead to me or something. I just, I don't know. Figure that out. Okay, goodbye.